you. Um, I want to look at um, John uh, chapter 5 and, um, and let's pray. Father, I just thank you for your precious word. And I pray in Jesus' name that you'll give me the message that will be true to your word, true to your Holy Spirit's direction, and lift you up and honor and glorify you. May each person receive something special, a blessing from this message today for your glory and honor. We love you and worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, John chapter 5. You may remember that uh, a few weeks ago we were talking about the healing of the man at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus was criticized for healing on the Sabbath, as usual it seems, by the religious people, the leaders, that is, that, who should have been leading people towards Christ instead of discouraging them. But they were lost and didn't know what they were doing. And um, so I want to read, I'm just going to start with verse 24 of John 5. Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. And shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death into life. Most surely I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Keep in mind, he is addressing the Jews, the, the religious people in particular, because it just got them saying, verse 16, that the Jews were, were um, seeking to kill him. And, um, and the leaders recognized that Jesus was making himself equal with God. Verse 18, it says the Jews sought to kill him all the more because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. He had just said, my father has been working until now, and I have been working. Okay. Jesus said repeatedly that he did what the father told him to do. He said what the father told him to say. He walked in relationship with the father. In fact, he modeled for us, I think, the relationship that God wants to have with us. We're, we're seeking him. We're listening to his voice. We're, we're obeying what he's telling us to do. We're following him. We're doing the things he's telling us to do. We're saying the things he's telling us to say. That we are honoring him with our whole lives. The Apostle Paul was so committed to this. He said, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I live by faith. I live by, in the life I live, I live by faith. In the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. God, Jesus, wants to live his life through us. Well, Jesus is setting out to the religious leaders his relationship with the Father. Um, in verse 21, I realize I haven't read this, I'm going to read it right now. It says, as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but is committed all judgment to the Son. All judgment has been committed to the Son. Romans 8 makes it clear that Jesus is the one who will judge, but he's our intercessor. He's our intercessor. He lives to make intercession for us, which is good news for us. He's holding out hope, and Jesus is telling these religious people who are accusing him of making himself equal with God and deserving death, and he's saying, yes, I and the Father are working together here. I and the Father are working together. Whatever the Son, whatever the Father does, the Son doesn't like matter. If you back up to verse 19, he's trying to help them see that he's functioning in the authority of the Father. And then he gets right to the core, saying, most certainly I say to you, he who hears my word, so he's saying, listen to what I'm saying, 
and believes in him who sent me, that's the Father, has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death into life. But Jesus was always pointing people to the Father. He was honoring the Father with his life. He says, do not marvel an hour is coming when all are in their graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Jesus is telling the people who are listening to him, that includes us now because we have it written down for us, that we can have life if we'll listen to him and believe, but we have to believe. And that belief will pour out, pour over in our life, in the way we live. We will actually produce good fruit, which demonstrates that we truly believe that Jesus is God's son. In fact, Jesus, Later, we'll talk about how he's the vine, we're the branches. And if we abide in him, he abides in us, we will bear much fruit. And apart from him, we can do nothing. And Jesus said, apart from the Father, he couldn't do anything. This, the truth of God's word about who Jesus is is so essential to our faith. And you know, I hear people in the church sometimes, and certainly in the world, who look at the world's religious systems and the different beliefs of other people and act like it doesn't matter what Jesus said or who he was. I, I had a Muslim, a young Muslim man I was talking to, and he said to me, I'd asked him if he'd like a copy of the Bible, and, he said, yeah, I, he said, I respect the word. I respect, no, I respect the Bible. And he said, do you respect the Quran? <laughs> and I, I got to admit inside, I'm thinking, whoa, I got to be honest with him, but how do I do this in a way that's gentle, okay? And, and so I told him, I said, I respect you. you. You are a person that God loves and has created. I respect you. As far as respecting the Quran, I respect the Holy Bible. And, and, and so I can't say that I really respect the Quran, but I do respect you. And, and so the thing is, the, the, the Muslim faith teaches that Jesus was a great prophet, right? And he acknowledged that. I said, but the Bible claims that he was more than that. Jesus himself claimed to be more than that. He claimed to be God's son. And if he's not God's son, then he can't be a great prophet or even a good man, as the Buddhists say, because he'd be a liar and a deceiver. But if he is God's son, as I believe for sure that he is, then he's the only way, because he said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, I didn't go into all of that with him. I did go into some of it with him. And the reality is, so many in our day would say, oh, yeah, I respect the Quran. I respect all the holy books. I've heard that kind of phrasing so many times. It almost makes me nauseous. Because we are in a spiritual battle, light and darkness, God's kingdom versus Satan and his minions, Right? And I, I believe these other religious systems that have been established are deceptions meant to lead people away from the only hope that they have. If it didn't matter what our beliefs were, then there was no reason for Jesus, for the Father to send Jesus to die for us. Because you just do your best in whatever religious system you're in and, and, and you'll be fine, right? But it matters. 
that God sent his only begotten Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That Jesus is the way and the only way. And, and he makes clear in our, in our text that there will be a ju judgment, there'll be a resurrection. He says, do not marvel for the hours coming in which all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. But understand the part of doing good, what he's talking about doing good, is not believing in Jesus. Because Paul said there's no one who does good, not even one. So nobody does good. Except for Jesus. And he becomes our righteousness. He produces goodness in us by his presence. But apart from him, we can't. The work of God, we'll read later in the Gospel of John, is to do, is to believe in the name of the Son. Believing in Christ is the work of God. If you believe in Him, everything else flows from that relationship because His life comes into you and He transforms you and lives through you when it's authentic faith. When we truly believe in Jesus, going, wanting to go to church and be in church doesn't become even an issue to talk about because it's like, Jesus is the head of the church. We're the arms of the body. And I want to worship him. I want to serve him. I want to glorify him. I want to live for him. I want my life to be about him, with him directly and everything. And worshiping together is part of that. It's part of that. Part of my way that I get to say thank you. I told somebody that recently. I said, you know what? When you give your life to Jesus and for the rest of your life, you get to say thank you, God. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for sending your son. Thank you for sending somebody to share the truth. Thank you for your word. You get to say thank you for the rest of your life. The son will be raised from the dead to experience condemnation. That's very real. The Bible is clear that there is an eternal heaven and there's an eternal hell. And Jesus said the road to destruction is broad and many travel it and the road to heaven is narrow only if you find it and he claimed to be the way the truth the life he said no one will come to the father except through him he claimed to be the door he claimed to be the gate to heaven if you don't have jesus you're lost it's really that simple if you don't have jesus you're lost if you don't have Jesus, you need to get a hold of one of his word, his holy Bible, and start reading it and studying it. Say, God, show yourself to me. Help me to understand who Jesus is. He is your life, your meaning, your purpose. We need him. If I was going to give this, this sermon a, a, a title, I think it's called, Give Me Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Well, this morning... Well, I was doing some meditating on his word and praying, and, and this song that started going through my mind is, is that song, Give Me Jesus. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Yeah. When I come to die, give me Jesus. We need Jesus always. We need his life in us. I've been thinking about more and more the power of prayer, intercession. The fact that the judgment day of God is coming quicker and quicker. We don't know how soon. But I, I think many of us in the church have that sense. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. It's always been getting closer. But I think we're living in a time. Well, I just believe it's getting closer than what many imagine. And so I think of the people in my own life that I know, whether it be family members or whether it be co-workers or whether it be just friends and neighbors or the people who are living so outside God's will. It makes me sad inside, but that sadness needs to translate into something else into compassionate intercession and prayer for them. Praying and asking God to soften their hearts, 
to open their minds, to repent and to give their lives to Jesus. Society doesn't want us to believe in right versus wrong, but there is a right versus wrong. God's way is right. His way is right. These religious people in the first century, these religious leaders that should have known better. Jesus, Jesus said of them in, in verse 39, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they which testify of me, but you're not willing to come to me that you may have life. You understand, they were very religious. Spending all kinds of time fasting and praying and going to the temple and doing these religious activities and these sacrifices. And different, but they refused the Christ to have life. And there is no other name given by men by which we must be saved but the name of Jesus. So we need to pray and intercede and we need to hold Jesus up as the only way and not compromise that. I was, when I was put on the spot by the Muslims saying, do you respect the Quran? I didn't want to build, I didn't want to build a barrier between us. Okay, because I, because I cared. I was reaching out to this man. I was trying to, to work with him to see that Jesus is the only way. I was wanting him to figure that out. And I thought, if I'm not careful how I communicate this, I could shut that down. So I sought to be gentle, but I had to be honest. It would have been so disingenuous if I had said, yes, I do, because I don't. I don't. I believe there's probably a lot of sincere people that do, but being sincere doesn't mean you're saved. We can be sincerely wrong. But one thing I don't believe Let me reword that. Yes, we can be sincerely wrong. But I really do believe that there's only one way. I think the Bible has demonstrated that Jesus is truly God's son. Hundreds of prophecies written hundreds of years before Jesus came, and he fulfilled them. And he's made it so simple for us. He's not made it hard. He's not made it to men have to jump through all these different hoops. Most assuredly, I say to you, verse 24, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. I think that's talking the spiritual, the, the spiritual, because he said, he, he said the hour is coming and now is. Before we come to Christ, we are dead, even though we don't realize we're spiritually dead, we're spiritually lost. But when we hear the word of God and we search the scriptures to know him, it's not bad to search the scriptures. It's bad to ignore the message of God, which throughout this Bible is saying, I love you and I love you so much that I've sent my son to die for you if you will repent of your sins and turn to Christ, be baptized in him and follow him. I will rescue you because of your faith. But it's a living faith, an active faith, a good fruit producing faith. We need to make sure that we are in Christ. And that we need to be aware of the people around us, praying and interceding for the people around us, and holding up the truth. More and more, all you have to do is watch what's going on in our country alone. So much immorality, so much that's going on, that it's legislating even against the church, a form of persecution, I think. We need to stand our ground on who Christ is in our hearts, to know who he is and to be willing to lift him high. Because we live in a time of people, so many people are searching for meaning and they're looking at all the wrong ways, all the wrong places. 
and they're coming up empty. If they'll only look to Jesus, they'll find out they've discovered meaning, purpose. Their lives will be transformed. We hold this truth in our hearts. Folks, let's make the most of every opportunity. Let's pray. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we would make the most of every opportunity that we would be unashamedly acknowledge Jesus is the only way and that the Holy Bible is your word. That we would be uncompromising in our faith, but at the same time, help us to respect people and to love people where they are while we hold up the truth and the light of Christ. Uncompromising, Lord. Uncompromising but gentle and full of love and respect, but also honest. There is no other name given by men by which we must be saved but the name of your Son, Jesus. We love you. I pray if there's anyone who's hearing this message today that has not surrendered to you, that they will do so. They will open your word, get to know you, repent, be baptized, turn to you, follow you for the rest of their lives. Transform beautifully by the power of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week, folks. Have a blessed week.